it's time for Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today. My name is Pete and this is our weekly show all about all things Garage Band and Garage Band adjacent. So if you're creating music on your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac using Garage Band or Logic or really anything because we do generic stuff too, then uh, strap on in because we're going to have some fun here today. We are brought to you this week as we are each and every week by the Garage Band iOS FAQ over at Studio Live today.com slash garage band where you can find out all the garage band goodness you know what we haven't done in a while we haven't played the jingle let's play that and get started with garage band weekly garage band, garage band weekly garage band garage band weekly garage band Yes, it is time for Garage Band Weekly, and uh, what you're seeing there is indeed this guide that Mr. Thomas Christ is letting you know about, which has all of the questions that you would have starting out in Garage Band, or maybe you're a seasoned Garage Band veteran and you just need a little bit of a refresher and you want to know about mixing, you want to know about mastery, you want to know how to merge recordings or edit your MIDI, it's all there for you, for your eyeballs and your ear holes over at the Garage Band Guide. No, that's wrong. That's the other bloke at the Garage Band FAQ over at studiolivetoday.com slash garage band. So today, what we're doing is a little bit of q and I've got a bunch of rant topics, so I will be ranting about a few things. So if you don't bring the questions, you're going to get some opinionated ranting. So if you like the rants, then don't ask any questions. If you want to try and avoid the rants, all you need to do is put a big Q, just put a big fatty old Q or the word question in front of your comment. And then if you have a question, I will try and answer it and uh, I, I have the brains trust here. So I have some amazing folks here that can also help out. So if I can't answer it, there's a good chance that someone like Jade Star, Dr. Zorders, Mr. Thomas Christ, Audible Video, Mark Bro, we've got everyone here and uh, they will be able to help you out. Now, just a little bit of uh, upfront uh, admin work here. I was going to do a vocal recording show today and I had to pull the plug on that one because you can probably tell by the voice that it's a little bit husky. So I've got a wee bit of a cold. Uh, so I'm, I've decided that I'm not going to push the voice to sing, but I tested it out and I'm like, oh, I'm okay to actually talk. So I'll come on here and have a, have a chat because why not? We're going to talk about a bunch of things. So look, in terms of the, the news and notes, it hasn't been a heap specifically related to GarageBand. This is the quiet zone. November into December, well, leading into Black Friday, we'll talk about that in a moment, but November for, for GarageBand, for Apple, for tech news in general, is usually a bit of a quiet zone. Now, there's one particular topic that has generated a little bit of interest. I don't know if you're aware, but there's a, uh, there's a social media platform by the name of Twitter. Has anyone used this before? Twitter? Uh, there it is there, where people basically yell at other people about things that they don't have the facts about. So uh, Twitter, well, there's some saucy photos. Uh, Twitter is being bought by uh, by um, um, e. Elno Musk, and um, he's decided that he will fire most of the staff there and uh, change it all up and bring back people that were banned, uh, re- reduce and remove all the moderation that was there to try and protect people, and uh, just generally uh, turn it into a tyre fire. <laughs> A steaming pile of rubbish. So uh, if you are a Twitter fan or a Twitter apologist, then uh, I'd love to hear from you because I would, I, I'm honestly, look, I don't use it that much. As you saw from my post there, I kind of just post a link to my show uh, pretty much every day when I'm doing a show. I'll put a link there just because I know some folks follow me on Twitter and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, get them to, to come and watch the show here. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of people love it. It's it's got to be been known as the water cooler of uh, of social media. So it's like where people go. It's the town square, it's the water cooler, it's whatever cliche you want to throw at it. And I know there's people that are super sad about the potential demise of Twitter. But again, we've been through this, folks. Like, it's not something to worry about. The 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 media of the time is just rolling through. What was TikTok five years ago? We don't know. Now everyone's on TikTok and it's the number one viewing platform in the world. What was YouTube 15 years ago? It was nothing. Now it's the number two viewing platform in the world. And quickly declining, <laughs> which is a bit sad because I do love my YouTube. But yeah, what was Twitch? Twitch was nothing. It was only for gamers. And now there's a lot of folks on Twitch. Spotify, same deal. Spotify's the same. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really, it's not a big deal because the, the important part, and we'll bring it back to music because obviously you can rant about these sort of things for hours and I tend to do that. 
But to bring it back to music is if you're using social media to interact with other musicians and other music creators to either share your music or to get help and assistance in creating better music and building a community, those communities can be wherever you want. So for instance, the community around this channel is is segmented a little bit but, and it's in a few different places. But there's different communities. There's the Facebook community. There's a Create, Record, Release Facebook group that we have. There's folks who only ever watch YouTube who are in the YouTube comments who are there asking questions. We've got a Discord. So there's a bunch of folks who prefer Discord. There's people who love Twitter. There's people who love Instagram. It really doesn't matter as long as you're viewing social media as a two-way street. And this is a super important thing. I did I did an experiment yesterday. I uh, You might have seen this if you were on social media. I went through Facebook. I'm trying it with different social media every day. So I went to Facebook and in my Pete John's and my Pete John's music account, I just went through and I responded to, like not in a spammy way, but I just interacted and engaged. I put likes on posts that I like. I put comments on posts that were cool. I replied to questions. And the amount of engagement and two-way conversations that happened was super cool. But the problem is a lot of folks forget that if you don't do the giving, you can't do the taking. And it's amazing that now when I'm boasting things, guess what? My reach is about double what it was two days ago. Because Facebook says, oh, this guy's interacting with people and they're interacting in response to him. So if you want to be super sleazy about it, you can say, hey, it's a, it's a hack to get more people to see your posts when you post on things. Or if you want to be practical about it, you can say, well, it, it's just the way the world works. Like it's the same thing as if you're working in, a, in, a, in an office. You don't just go to a colleague whenever you want something and then uh, are missing whenever they come to see you. It's two-way communication. So I think it's the same. I think it's the same with social media. <laughs> yes, R.I.P. Twitter. Uh, yes, uh, same here. Oh, no, full of cold, coughing, etc. Yeah, well, um, not that I'd tell you if it was the other way around, but um, uh, yeah, I did do the did do the little test that you've got to do these days, and it was, it was negative, which is positive. <laughs> Hello, party audible. I hope you are doing well. Um, yeah, like it's, it's, it's interesting times, isn't it? Uh, not being on the, the, the twatter for a while. <laughs> Look, it's like most things, it depends on the community you're in, right? It can be super duper toxic or it can be really good. So there's a lot of positive things that can happen in all these communities. But unfortunately, people get carried away. People get uh, high on their own supply and it just becomes a free-for-all argument. And uh, that's why I don't go there. <laughs> Is Dr. Zorn a real doctor? Yeah, good question. Yeah, look, I've, I've avoided Twitter and I have avoided TikTok for a long time. I don't know how long I can continue to avoid TikTok, to be honest, because... Um, a large part of the demographic on this channel is actually folks that are 18 to 25 and 25 to 30, and they're all over TikTok, and most of them have left YouTube. So the reduction that we're seeing in views on YouTube is directly correlated by the views on TikTok. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how that is going. Uh, how have you copied my code without MySpace? Exactly the point, Thomas. Like, when my, I remember I had friends when MySpace was demised way back when. I had friends that like, no, I'm not leaving MySpace. You can, you can, I'm going to be buried in MySpace's graveyard because I'm never going to Facebook. I'm never going to Twitter. I want to stay on MySpace. And yeah, they did until they couldn't anymore. And it's going to be the same with Twitter. There will be Musk fans who are going to be on Twitter and are going to be in there defending him. There's probably the same people that are the crypto bros that are also crying into their wheat bix now. Yeah, that, that's fine until it goes away and then you just have to find something else. So it's, it's a bit of a metaphor for life, isn't it? That things change and uh, things move on. And if you don't move on with them, it, it, let's bring it back to recording. It's the same thing with the recording industry. I was, I was thinking about this today that the recording industry is moving in the same direction as media and as technology, which is that 50 years ago, to record something, you had to have a very high-end studio or uh, you know, a dodgy tape deck to record to. So the difference between home recording and pro recording was huge. So if you didn't have the million-dollar studio and you didn't have thousands of dollars to record, you basically simply couldn't make a good quality recording. Then it moved on to the fact that, oh, hey, we've got these um, you know four-track recorders. They're not as good, but you can definitely make a demo. Then it moved on to digital recording uh, at home where it was like, oh, this is starting to get in there. And then it moved on to like, the full-fledged Pro Tools and, and digital home PC recording suites. And uh, all the way along... People that are stuck in that 50-year-old metaphor of it's got to be to tape in a studio with professionals are being left behind. And there's still people that are fighting and raging against the machine, but they're going to have a harder time as we continue on. And now uh, I've got more power in this <laughs> that I can carry with me wherever I go than people had in their home PCs 10 years ago. 
And that's just a fact, Jack. Like, definitely got more storage and more RAM in this than I had in my in my ten year old PC. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting times to be sure. That's right. And yeah, I'm not going to mention any other names. I didn't even want to mention the the E word, the E M word. Uh, doctor says that if I was a doctor, I would have made the world a lot better place by now. Made it all better. Tolerance, understanding. Yeah, and all we can do. But together, we can all be doctors. There you go. There's a song in that. There's a song in that. Together, we can all be doctors. Doctor's orders. Together, we can all be doctor's orders. Something like that. Uh, Mark says, uh, some things are positive when they're negative. When a vacuum cleaner sucks, it's good. Exactly. The only thing you want to suck is a vacuum cleaner. Hang on. Uh, got the got the thing there. Uh, did I see Mars Capone? Let's check on in. Hello, Mars Capone. I still haven't checked out. Mars sent me a cool thing. Maybe we'll check it out live on the show if we uh, if we've got some time later. Mars sent me a cool thing about uh, Spotify and uh, hacking the hacking the Spotify algorithm, which is very interesting. I'll uh, I'll have to check that out myself. Uh, Phil Gone says, pretty much all I've seen from TikTok on other platforms like Insta is mostly people lip syncing themselves. Yeah. Uh, and this is it. So TikTok, for, just for a history lesson, for those that care, TikTok came out of an app called Musical.ly, music.ly, and it was exactly that. That's why this this is still happening so much. So what Musical.ly did is it took songs and then people did dances to them. They did lip syncing and they just did skits and things. So it was all about that. Now, I don't know what the appeal of that was. It doesn't appeal to me, but again, I'm not an 18-year-old. So uh, it's it's obviously appealing to enough people. Otherwise, there wouldn't be billions of people watching it. The What has happened? though a bit like how instagram was only for photographers for like the first three years and then the the regos came on board us regos sort of raided their their fun so just like that we've had the same thing with tiktok that normal folks (laughs) normal uh, but people like musicians so there's a lot of creators that are creating some really good content on tiktok now because you can just use it as a 30 second or a 60 second tutorial. The one thing I don't love is the the format, the vertical format. I find that kind of hard because if you're you know, showing GarageBand, I can't really show it like that. But I've done a couple of shorts videos on YouTube as well as put them onto TikTok and they've done well because things like doing you know phone based things, band lab on your phone, which you can do vertically is really good for short form content because it's used by a lot of people aged 18 to 25 who are creating their fire beats on their phones. So is it a bad thing to be able to help them and shouldn't we have us <laughs> us the normies uh, getting on there and helping people i don't know look i'm not sold on it phil i'm, I'm kind of just playing devil's advocate because i don't love it but the thing with that and what i'm finding is the more i go on there and say no 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 yes no 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 yes and it is that much you have to curate it you have to tell it what you like and what you don't like same with facebook uh, if you're getting if you're getting horrible facebook ads let's do a little uh, i'll show you a little behind the scenes thing here so if i go to my facebook I'm just going to go to my Pete John's music because uh, I won't take you to my personal personal page. But um, make sure, do this. If you don't like the ads, you're going to get ads anyway. You can use ad blockers and whatever, but that means people like me can't feed our children. You know, <laughs> guilt trip. But uh, yeah, look at that. $219 is a cheap price for a microphone here. Uh, but So I'm coming through here. I'm finding cool posts from Lily Pillies. I'm finding posts from people I like. I'm just trying to find the first post that's actually going to be an ad. There's so few ads in here. <laughs> I can't find any ads. Uh, so that's people reacting to things. There's Pokemon people. Uh, anyway, I can't find an actual ad. But if there's things you don't like, just use the little three dots here. So say I really didn't like Ice House. Use the three dots here and say hide post. Don't report them, but hide the posts. Or you can snooze people for 30 days. And when it's an ad, you can actually say, don't show this ad. Or I don't like this ad. And what it will do is it won't show you ads like that again. It's pretty weird that I can't find any ads here. <laughs> I think because I scrolled through and did this so much yesterday that, um, yeah, there's not many ads there today. But curate your content because uh, I used to do that. I used to complain about all the ads and that they were non. And here's the thing. Uh, it's it's the, I like targeted advertising. I know that's a, a hot take there. But I would prefer to get advertising about special deals on music gear as opposed to the latest reality TV show, My Mum, Your Dad, Our Nephew, Their Dog. So I, I'm all on board with training the algorithms to tell them what I like. And you can say, hey, John, you're selling your data. You're selling yourself short. I just think it's it's smart because I have to look at it anyway. So why not? Uh, Princess says, I use TikTok. I don't use TikTok. I'm 23. Yeah, so you're the target demo. (laughs) My head head hurts. Uh, Well, yeah, the old TikTok may get banned in the US if if the other team um, get ahead. (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) Because, oh, look, 
this is going to be the controversial episode. Um, if, if I'm ever going to get taken off of the platform, it's going to be for, for talking about uh, stuff today. But the problem with that is you can you can go down the xenophobic route of saying that you don't like a company because they're Chinese, but it also means that you have to throw your iPhone in the bin, you have to throw your Mac, you have to throw your PC, you have to throw your microwave. If you don't want stuff that comes out of China, guess what? You're going to be very short on technology because the vast majority of the things that you use on the daily basis are made in China. Components in your car, you're not going to be able to drive your car anymore because half the stuff in there is like, I bought an American-made car. Half the components are from China. Good luck with that. So, yeah, saying our company is based in China, so it's therefore much worse, it's not really a thing. Um, like there's, there's companies that come from all around the world, and unfortunately it's just the, the views of, uh, of some that would make it go that. There you go. Watching me dancing would fall. Oh, I was saying that last night, Mark. Uh, I was saying that with my kids that I could be one of those old people that doesn't get TikTok and that people laugh at because that seems to be the other you know popular thing at the moment is that you uh yeah there's people that are like oh it's a, it's a rapping granny and look at that like there was one that was like a an Italian dude and it was like his old Italian nonna and she'd be like what are you doing why I yeah like just yelling at him basically and it was just taking videos and I'm like yeah. Oh, there you go. You're going to have to rewind to, to, to hear that. No, it was, it was a pretty random rant. You probably don't. G'day, Zach Thong. I hope you are doing well. Uh, yeah, the ads between, the, the lines between ads and legitimate content are very blurry on TikTok. Yeah, and, and this, this is the thing. This is why I don't love the cryptocurrency world and the Web 3.0 world. So this world of uh, blockchain technology and unregulated platforms. Like, yeah, you can say things are overregulated, but at the same time, we need some of those regulations to know the difference because people are susceptible to scams and people are susceptible to advertising these days. And for a TikToker, 21-year-old dude, they haven't done all of the regulatory requirements to learn the rules that you need to do to do a giveaway, the rules you need to do to advertise something on a platform, the fact that you need to disclose if you're getting monetary compensation for doing something. They're just like, oh, uh, Adidas or Adidas uh, gave me 10 grand to show these shoes. And look, look, look at my fly kicks, y'all. And then they just do that. But they don't know that you have to put hashtag sponsored, hashtag ad. They don't know that you have to actually, if you're going to give something away, in most parts of the world, you have to have terms and conditions around that giveaway. You can't. That's why I don't do giveaways, <laughs> because I have to adhere to the YouTube rules. I have to adhere to the uh, South Australian lotteries rules, believe it or not, because I'm based in South Australia. And if I'm running a lottery from South Australia or any sort of random giveaway, I have to abide by those rules. So it's, it's nuts. And uh, unfortunately... The, these kids are, are flying by the seat of their pants and they are going to get in trouble eventually. Like there's going to be a crackdown. There's gonna, they're going to go, and ignorance is not a defense. Like saying, I didn't know that I couldn't just accept large mo- amounts of money, present content as organic, but it's actually paid. That doesn't hold up. Like no court's going to go, oh, well, you didn't know. Well, that's okay then, dear. We'll go easy on you. All right. <clears throat> Jade says, I've only recently moved to TikTok and doing Insta FB Reels and Shorts on YouTube and it's blowing up my channel. Yeah, uh, look, it's it's where it's at, to be honest. Um, yeah, you, you can uh, you can do what I did, <clears throat> which is point and laugh and go, I'm <laughs> never going to be over there with those people. But again, I would be a hypocrite because I said that about the people that wouldn't move from analog to digital and I said that about the people that wouldn't move from digital to mobile for their recording. So it's the same sort of thing for for, for the social media side of things. Yeah, there you go. We'll have to we'll have to all go look at Jade Star on TikTok. Very good. Uh, there's definitely a market there, uh, which is why there are <laughs> yeah unsavory startups uh, exploiting it right now. Exactly. It's always going to happen. Yep. Uh, and that's the thing. If if we <laughs> I say this every time, I'm like, if you don't want like if you don't want things to be in China, and you if you actually found out what it would cost to buy all the things you buy today, if you had to pay the wages and the cost of infrastructure that we have in countries like the USA and Australia, you would be floored. You'd be flabbergasted because a product that you currently, a a $100 piece of audio kit that's made in China, that same bit of kit being made in the USA would probably be 300 or 400 because you have to pay your staff three or four times as much for labor. And you have to pay for the, the building that you're building it in. You have to pay for the infrastructure and you have to pay the taxes and you have to pay the government duties. There's a whole lot of reasons why it happens. So I'm not saying you can't have an opinion. I'm just saying that it's a, it's, it's a slippery slope uh, and you, kinda, you can't have it one way and you can't say, no, we don't want any Chinese companies, but please Chinese companies make all of our stuff for us at slave labor wages. It just doesn't make any sense. There are indeed some strange TikTok people, indeed. 
Uh, Mars says, Jade and Peter, I request a TikTok show since I am clueless and old. Yeah, look, it's it, uh, let, let, <laughs> this is going to be the weirdest show. I apologize uh, if, you, if you came here. We're not getting many questions. So if you came here, I did, I did warn you before. Uh, but uh, if you came here for some you know, really good quality advice about about GarageBand, it's probably not the show for you. Go go back to go back to previous shows where I actually did stuff. But yeah, the, the TikTok is weird. And uh, if if we go in, look, I'm not I'm not going to log in here, but I'll just go. Let's find. Uh, I know Jay won't mind because uh, go and go and follow Jay's. I got to try and find her. So that's the problem. Try to find people. Uh, let's go see if I can find a how to app on iOS. We'll bring it back to relevance. Uh, Jay, what's your <laughs> what's your TikTok? Because <laughs> I can't find you, Jade Star Dread Circus. Uh, boo, 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 boo. No, I can't find you. Um, who's someone that I do know that does content over on the TikToks? Um, what's the bloke's name? I can't remember him now. Uh, does Patrick there? Let's see if there's Garage Band guy. Let's see if Patrick's over on the TikToks. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh no, there's not GarageBand. There is GarageBand content. So he, here's a look at the sort of content that uh, that GarageBand folks are putting out there. How I made this beat in under 30 seconds on GarageBand. Let's let's take a look at this. Um, again, it's the Wild West, so there's not going to be any copyright on this stuff, I would imagine. So I'm probably okay to to play. Oh, there you go. Hashtag How to App on iOS. I will uh, I'll take a look at that in a sec. So uh, if we take a look at this one, what has this had? Uh, 111 point one thousand views. So uh, basically, that would be my fifth highest video of all time if I produced this. And this is someone creating a video in vertical, but just with some text on there showing how to do it from like December last year. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the, the content quality we have on TikTok. Creating the beat. Synth pad. A clap. Hi-hat. Some 808, because of course. Some FX. Melodies together. Okay, this is pretty solid. There you go. And look at that. This beat is actually really good for GarageBand. Uh, for GarageBand, god damn. So yeah, so that, that's what the sort of thing. So 5,900 likes, 167 comments, and as we saw, 100,000 views for uh, Aaron. And Aaron uh, has you know, 3,100 followers. So this is the difference between something like uh, a Facebook or an Instagram, a YouTube, and now what TikTok is doing. Because they're short form, because they're presented to people based on the algorithm of what they like before, yeah, th there's a real opportunity there for any of you like every single person watching live and on the replay to actually go and do this. Whether you want to or not is entirely up to you. But there's opportunities out there because look at this. This this artist is just putting all this stuff out on TikTok. Um, where are we? Look at all this. Yeah, it's all their different production. Look, it's not all GarageBand. Looks like they're doing some stuff in on Mac as well. But yeah, all of these are getting 1,000 views, 12,000 views, 12,000 views. So it's building an audience and it's building something. So I don't know who Aaron Basquiat is uh, and uh, whether they're over on YouTube as well. But yeah, you can go here, beat be stores. So maybe they're a beat creator and maybe they're selling their beats and this is their way to link into their, their beat sales. Like it's a smart way. It's, it's marketing at the end of the day. It's marketing you and your music. And uh, a lot of people are, are using it. Let's uh, let's see if we can find uh, find Jade Star. Um, what was that? Hashtag how to app on iOS. Let's see if we can find something from Jade. There she is. All right, let's see uh, Jade Star. I'm sure she won't mind us playing this. Go and go and follow. Look, she got 27 followers, and that's the thing. Jade's just started. She got 27 followers, and that, that's super cool. And you know, you're starting out. You're getting like 200 views. You're getting 100 views. This is like within the first few weeks and without even really trying to do much. And you can cross-purpose your content. So if you're creating short-form content for YouTube or for, for Reels on Instagram, you can just cross-post it and put it onto TikTok as well. Because why not? Why wouldn't you be in a bunch of places where you can be? Uh, what, where, what am I? I'm at Pete Johns, I think, as I am most places. There I am. So uh, yeah, so I haven't done a whole heap. When was my last video? was uh, the phone charger won't play. Yeah, so, so I did a little mini version of my like clean out your headphone jack video. Uh, but yeah, when the new iPads came out, I put a TikTok there and got you know, 800 views, a little bit of fun there with Savage Garden because the oh, this, <laughs> this one, um, will I get a copyright claim? Yeah, I will. I can't play that one. But uh, it's, it's how the, the lead singer of Savage Garden sounds like a sheep. 
It's pretty fun. Uh, my music there did a couple. So yeah, this one sharing FX presets in Band Lab. You know, a couple of thousand views, and some people actually saw that and then came over and watched my full length tutorials on YouTube because they're like, oh, I didn't know you did Band Lab stuff. And like, I didn't either. I just put out this one video and did it. But yeah, it, and if you, you hit something that's just, you know, a bit funny or a bit quirky or a bit different, you can 100% get uh, get a bunch of views and attention. Like, look, this one here uh, won't be, so this was me um, trying to have a bit of fun. Next time you're trying to write some lyrics and you're worried that your lyrics don't make any sense, just remember, okay, Google, play that Red Hot Chili Peppers song where they just go ning, nang, nong, nong, ning, nang, nong, nong, ning, nang. This is actually something you can still do on your Google. Around the world, explicit by Red Hot Chili Peppers, sure. <laughs> Playing on YouTube music. So yeah, so there you go. So there's, you know, two two thousand seven hundred people like that nonsense that took me yeah, and that's that's what's sad. The one that sad thing I find about short form content is that you can create something like that in about what, two minutes? And yet I sit here and I plan shows that I do on here that are like one hour live shows that take me three hours to plan. And they'll get a tenth of views of something like that. Um, what's the one with the banana? Uh, that's a good question. What, what is the one with the banana? I didn't didn't mean this to become a, a random weird. Let's watch Pete's TikToks show. Um, what was the banana one? Uh, I think it was where are oh, there? <laughs> yeah, I um I have I have real problems peeling bananas at times. So uh, this was uh, my idea. Your banana won't peel, so you have no choice but to open it. Like a psychopath. Yeah, but that, banana that's legitimately how I uh, open bananas. Sometimes is uh, if I if I can't get the peel thing, you know, sometimes that peel thing gets stuck and you don't have a knife. If you just really quickly snap it in the middle, you kind of just eat it out both ends. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a strange man. Uh, the, the naked one, the naked banana. <laughs> Hopefully, there was no naked ones in there. I don't, I don't think TikTok allows you to have any nakedness on there. But yeah, look, some of it, and weirdly enough, the ones where I've tried to actually help people and provide content that's actually educational don't do so well. The ones where it's just a bit of fun, they do better. So uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's options there. Uh, that's true if you feel self-conscious about your lyrics. They're probably not as bad as Red Hot Chili Peppers lyrics of the last 20 years. Spot on. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I know. And that was me. That was back in my office job. So doctor, that was right towards the end of my office job. That was actually, I took that video in, uh, in the office. So people must have thought I was a bit weird. Snapping bananas in half. With ridiculousness. Um, let's see what's on my list here. So we've talked, I did want to talk about Twitter and social media and TikTok because it's where things are going. Uh, while we're on the topic of that um, and, and social media, uh, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning it here, but our mate Jamie Mallander, who is amazing creator, let, let's, let's give him a pump. I know that many of you are probably already following Jamie and the great work that he does. If you are a mobile creator, so I know, you know Princess LDG, you create on, on Cubasis 3. If you're a mobile creator, you definitely want to watch Jamie Mallander, dude. He is very, very cool. So jump on over here. He creates some great music. He creates some great uh, packs as well. So he creates some excellent uh, packs through Mobile Music Pro. So uh, yeah, you want to go there. Look, that was the opening hour with Jamie. Uh, that, uh, that he did over on Jay's channel. So uh, yeah, at Jamie Malander, M-A-L-L-E-N-D-E-R. He actually, uh, he's someone who's very smart and wise and knows a lot about the app development side of things, which is really interesting because a lot of app developers at the moment, like like everyone, everyone's, there we go. Tom, thank you, Thomas. Everyone's in the same boat at the moment, which is that we are in a recession or at least a decline, financial decline in most parts of the world at the moment. And that's affecting people, including app developers. And there, he mentioned, again, I don't, I'm sure he won't mind me because he put it on a, not a public forum, but he put it on a, a group the other day. There's, you know, there's developers, multiple developers that are simply not developing for iOS anymore. Why? Because iOS apps cost about a fourth or a fifth as much as the full desktop app. And there are still more people, a lot more people, producing on desktop compared to iOS. So his point around that was, instead of, uh, it, it, look, it's, it's a controversial thing, it's like instead of you know just going around and buying all these apps and waiting for apps to be a dollar or two dollars to buy them and just buying everything, a better option is to find developers and apps that you really love and you really want to use and then buy them and then use them and then create music. And I was like, yep, I, I jumped on there and said, yep. And of course, there were plenty of people saying, no, it should be it should be better. It should be free. These people should be providing services for free. 
And look, I get it because when I first started out, I looked for cheap apps and I still do. I, I, I prefer free or 99 cents over 19.99 and most people do. The problem with 99 cents for an app is that a developer has to sell a heap of those in order to actually make a living and then be able to keep making more and more apps. And I know that you know folks like Jade Starr, who does How to App on iOS, she says it all the time. They're not Pokemon. You don't have to collect them all and you don't have to buy them all. And you don't have to like go around. There's, there's, <laughs> there's professional uh, contest enterers. You know how I talked about giveaways before? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people that are doing you know, giveaways out in public on, on channels and it's weird because you watch their videos and they'll get like 100 views on a video and then they'll do a giveaway and they'll get 1,000 views and it's like, gee, I wonder why those extra 900 people came in. They're the professional contest enterers. So I'm sure there's some people out there and I'm not talking, I know Jade, you do stuff on uh, on Patreon. I'm not talking about that where, where it's a, a private thing where there's opportunities that developers want to actually get their apps into the hands of competent people to actually demonstrate them and to use them because that's just great advertising and word of mouth. But there's, yeah, there's just this culture that things should be free and it's, it's all come from the, the, the fact that apps, when the app store started, everything was 99 cents. So people are just like, iOS must be 99 cents. And it's like, if iOS remains at 99 cents, uh, we're just not going to get the quality apps developed for it anymore. And people will go to desktop and that's fine. And my final point on that was, that's totally fine. I, I don't, I kind of get sick of hearing people trying to defend coming into an iOS music creation forum and telling us why they don't use iOS and defending their decision to move to desktop. It's like, good on you, more power to you. Yes, desktop has a lot more options and it's a different platform and it has a different things you can do. What are you doing wasting your time talking to people that want to use iOS about how inferior it is? Go and make music. Get out there and make some music, son. Like, spend your time wisely. So that was my final point. I'm like, okay, now that I've ranted for two minutes about this on Facebook, I'm going to go back and make some music. And I did. I went into GarageBand and started making music because that's what we're all here for, right, at the end of the day. Yes, Jamie is a darn cool dude indeed. Did I not bring water? I didn't bring water, so I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to, have to have substitute water, which is one of my little cough lollies here. So uh, getting behind the scenes here today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's super cool. We love Jamie. Uh, free, free doesn't put food on the table exactly. And uh, there's, there's, yeah. Look, it, and the other thing is, it ties into the fact that some people think that music needs to just be your passion, and that anyone that wants to monetize their music is is inherently evil. They're like, no, but you're a sellout if you if you make money with music. You're an absolute sellout. Like you can't you can't monetize music. Nothing is. Yeah, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, want desktop apps going to have to pay desktop price yeah exactly spot on like people people are going to be flabbergasted if Logic Pro ever does come to iPad probably going to be the same price as desktop <laughs> because if it's got the same features why wouldn't it be like what's the point if it does absolutely everything if tomorrow Apple found a way to implement every single feature of Logic Pro on an iPad Pro why should they charge any less than $199 doesn't make sense Jimmy, dude, absolutely. Um, I'm trying a new thing in StreamYard, by the way, which is going to be good. Like, I know that, uh, Jade, I think you're still using Restream for a lot of your stuff. I know that um, Ma uh, Mark, Mike over at Creative Source is using, uh, using Restream. I've stuck with StreamYard just because I found it more reliable, and they've actually added a couple of cool new features recently. Uh, so a while ago, they added stereo audio and 1080p video, which is why I look and sound better. <laughs> okay. But they've just added individual local recording for all guests. So this is going to be a game changer. So when I'm actually doing a live stream, you'll know that sometimes you get that choppiness, you get that blurriness, you get that glitches in the audio. That's because it's not because of the processing of the audio at my end. It's because it's being sent out through StreamYard. Then StreamYard is sending that out to YouTube. Then YouTube are processing that and sending that out. So it's getting cut down, compressed and rebroadcast a bunch of times. What StreamYard have done now is I've just ticked a little button here and it's actually recording. At the same time that I'm streaming live, it's recording locally to my hard drive. At the end, instead of having to download this from StreamYard, from the web, it'll be right here on my computer. And other guests can do the same thing. So if Jade and I are doing a stream, and Jade, I think we need to, <laughs> I think I need you on the show so we can test this out soon. But if I've got Jade here on the stream, it'll record. So if she's in the StreamYard app, even if she's using OBS and using virtual cam to send that into StreamYard, it's going to record a local recording on her computer of her audio and her video. And that means if we get to the end of a show and I want to chop up some of those bits and re-edit them together, I can actually do that. And the other cool thing is, you know how at the moment, if I if I split between screens, it would, you know, it would look like that. And if I had Jade on here, or if I had Thomas Christ on here, we'd have split screen and things. 
it'll actually record, well, that's my iPad has turned off, it'll actually record the full screen. So you could do something where if you had an interview, you could re-edit it to switch between the two talking heads, a bit like Google used to do, you know, five years ago. It's a bit weird that we used to have, <laughs> Google Hangouts had that ability five years ago, and uh, Google took it away, because again, because of that stuff, because of the scratch, because of the green. Uh, there you go. I actually restream, uh, use restream to restream OBS, yeah. And that's the thing, like I'm using OBS as well. I've only got the web client up to push OBS into because I, I do things like the banners. So if I wanted banners, I could do that. I could set it up and use restream and then just send the, what's called the RMTP uh, stream directly into uh, restream or into StreamYard. But if I want to be able to do banners, if I want to be able to do uh, anything like that I do here, if I want to be able to put up um, put up the, the comments, then uh, yeah, do that. Yeah, I want Logic Pre too. Give it to me for free. Just in time for my section debuc debuckle? Debacle. Ah, sec you've got a section debacle? All right, get, what, what, what's your question, Rena? Yeah, you having trouble with sections? I did get some questions about sections <laughs> this week. Oh, the chat heads, yeah. Man, there was there's so many things. Uh, music is done for love, happiness, something hopefully unique, but never for a gain. Well, yeah, that's it. I mean, and that that's the thing. It all comes down, doesn't it? Like I rant about this stuff, but doesn't every single thing? Doesn't the solution to every single thing be, if you're a consenting adult wanting to do a thing, just do it. And if you're another adult, how about instead of judging that person on doing something that differs from your views and opinions, you just get on with your own life and leave them alone? Isn't that the ultimate? So like, how is? Uh, uh, no one's come to me with a rebuttal to why that shouldn't be the answer to every single question. Gay straight, just let each other do it. iOS versus desktop, just let each other do it. Like, why does it affect you? Why do you need to be involved in what someone else does? It makes no sense at all. Uh, here we go. Let's go with this reader one. I decided to try adding more sections to my only chorus, and thought you would then just edit the sections, moving them around. Why are the why do the tracks then want to stretch out and get hard to deal with? Hmm, this is an interesting one, Rena. Let's uh, let's jump into something that has sections and we'll have a little play because we haven't done anything practical for the, the, the whole show. <laughs> so we should probably do something practical. Let's just make sure that my iPad is showing on the screen here. There she blows. And uh, what can we open? What's something that has some sections? Um, go back to... Oh, no, 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 no. This is a problem. I, I don't use sections in a lot of my demo stuff, so I'm going to have to jump out and find... Let's go into my Song Temper song, because I definitely used sections in Song Temper 2021. In work in progress, did I? Yes, I did. All right. So if I jump in here, in fact, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this one out so that I'm not breaking my final version of that. All right, there we go. Work in progress, 22. So we'll jump in here. So the thing with sections... And the way that they work here in GarageBand, let's just move that out of the way. So you, you can see here I've got sections A, B, C, D, E. And if you hit the plus button here, uh, it's so, currently it's on all sections. So we're able to view all sections. You can edit by moving sections around. And what that will do is it will move all of the audio in that section, even if it's not split at the point. So let me show you what I mean. If we come here to F, let's just say for this song, this F section here, let's just see if we've got audio. So this F section is my chorus. So let's just carry along here. What it's going to do is it's going to move everything right down that line. It's actually going to split it automatically and then move it. So if we go back here and we go to edit sections and we go to F, let's just say we decided to switch this up and bring the chorus in before the pre-chorus. Why we do that? No idea. So we do that. Look what happens over here. It actually shifts everything. The problem you're going to have, though, is if you've got little bits of audio or data just before sections, see how it's done things like this? So here, because this like led into a section, it doesn't always do it properly. So what you have to do is sometimes do a little bit of manual fiddling because that little section there should actually be back over here. So when we go between these sections, take a listen. See, it didn't have the we're all just to work because that's the where is over here. And now this bit, see what I mean? So that may be the thing that's happening is that sections are great until you have a lead. What are they called in music where you have that, you know, that last note that leads into the next bar. So whenever you have something like that, you're going to have to manually adjust it. So here I'd manually adjust it by putting this back there. But 
you know, it doesn't really make sense because of the way this is structured. But if I grabbed that, what I'd have to do is grab this little chunk and tap and hold and move it back over to here so that when it came out of this section and into that section, so it's going to be hard to, going to, have to zoom in and get it right on the grid. So that that's potentially what's happening. Without actually knowing and being able to see your project, that's potentially the sort of thing where... It's, because we're all just, so not having that little because we're all just. So that's it. <laughs> work in, exactly. We're all just a work in progress. Did I tell you the time that uh, someone came at me about this song? <laughs> I thought it was like the least controversial song that I've ever written because who can argue with the fact that none of us are perfect and we're all just a work in progress? But someone was like, oh, I think, uh, I think they might have been religious. But they were like, um, are you saying that we are not made perfect? And I'm like, yes, that's <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. Are you saying you are perfect? And they're like, no, that's not what I meant to have made in the vision of blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's uh, that, that. so that's probably, possibly what you're seeing there, Rena, is those little little tops and tails bits that are popping out that might actually be the bits that you're having problems with. So you might just have to do that. Uh, yeah, so you just have to have the cursor paste at the beginning of the other section. Um, so yeah, if, if you're actually moving things around, if you wanted to completely move things, then yeah, you can do, once you've created your sections, you can move them manually by just tapping and holding and grabbing, and then you can actually move them. If you need them to go over the top of other things, you can do that. Or if you need to say, create extra space, so if you don't want to move the sections around here, you can just change. So say we wanted an extra four bars in here to create some space, all you need to do there is come, oh, edit, is come into this one, and uh, I've got to remember how to do this now. Uh, it's not edit, is it? It's the I button there. There we go. Put the I button and then make that 12 bars. And then when we come out here, see, it's going to create some extra space. And then you can move things into that space. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, people do have a hair trigger. It's it's kind of strange, isn't it? Um, but, uh, yeah, again, each to their own, <laughs> I say. Uh, what time do you go live on Monday? You know what, you know what would be cool? Um, I put out a newsletter every week. So anyone can do this, studiolivetoday.com slash email. I put out a newsletter and what that has is a playlist and it also has links to each and every show. So this week I've got five different shows, which I'll tell you about at the end of this one. So there's five different shows that we're doing. Uh, this is GarageBand Weekly. This is at the same bat time, same bat station every week. And then uh, the other shows, you'll be able to, any variations on that, you'll be able to set yourself reminders. You'll be able to be here for your shows. Because I know that... Um, I know there's been some time changes with things like uh, daylight savings. So, yeah. If you're ever wondering where I am, that's it. Uh, every time I finish moving the sections on that board, my track stretch out and won't go back to compress view when I go close to edit the window. Ah, oh, I see what you're doing. Yep, I think I'm with you. Okay. Uh, so, the other thing you need to be wary of is making sure that when you're going to sections, this, yeah, sorry, I should have I should have realized this. If you tap on the plus button there, Always make sure you're in all sections view because what you're doing, this is probably what you mean by stretched out. Is, is it doing this? Is it you're tapping on one section and then it's doing that? It's filling your screen and you can't go to the other sections and then you can't seem to get back. If you have that, all you need to do is, um, yeah, go back to your plus. Get that. This is the thing. It puts that in your way. If, if you ever can't see your plus button, it's because this gets in the way down here. Move your playhead, hit the plus button and tap on all sections and then tap out and then everything's going to be in view. So yeah, th that's probably what's happening is you're creating sections, and unfortunately the default way, which is stupid, if you hit the plus button here and add a section, it adds that section, and then when you come back out, it'll zoom to just that section by default. So it should be that it automatically default. If there was a, an option to auto default it to all sections, that would be great, but GarageBand just makes it a little bit more difficult for you. So um, yeah, go figure. Yeah. I uh, appreciate, yeah, so I'll often, especially for the bigger shows, I'll always do a YML show reminder on Patreon. So if you're a patron, you'll always get a, a little email notification when YML's happening. I should do that for the other shows. But um, yeah, if you if you have the email, uh, it's, it's I'll, I'll show you what it is. I'll show you how it looks. Let's go to my email and find it. It's, it's called Studio Live Weekly, and uh, it's, uh, it's an easy way to keep up with everything. Studio Live Weekly... Do, 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 do. So, I've got to find my own, got to find my own thing. Here it is. So, this is what it will look like. This will land in your inbox every week. 
and uh, yeah, it doesn't have the images on here because it, images are not display. Let's display the images. I'll trust myself. So you'll just get this. There you go. The OG Studio Live Weekly 166, and this is what you want. So it'll have the live playlist there. So that's the easiest way. If you just click on that one, it'll dump you straight in here, and I update this every week. So you can see here this week, we had the happy hour. We had YML yesterday. This is what we're doing here live right now. We've got two shows coming up. We've got Facts Giving. So we're going to do another generic, more general Q&A live show on Thanksgiving because I thought, hey, our American folks are probably going to be uh, a little over all the Thanksgiving festivities. By then, you're going to be stuffed with turkey, you're going to be sitting on your sitting on your rump, and you might want to just hang out for a couple of hours and talk uh, recording. And then we're doing uh, the the obligatory Black Friday. Are there any good deals for Black Friday? Then we're going to be doing that on Black Friday. Did I, um, I think I've set that for the wrong time. Uh, oh, no, I have it. That's Saturday. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm like, did I set that at the time of Jade's show? No, Jade's Jade's show's Friday, 7.30. That's why I've set that one for 9.30. Okay, I'm good. I'm talking out loud. But um, yeah, go ahead, go over and do that and uh, you'll be at Golden. All right, cool. Uh, that, that's helped you, Rena. Excellent. Well, that's what, we're, that's what we're here for. That is a bit of a trap. And you know what? That's going on to the list of things I need to do a video about. Because I reckon that, that might be a great one to do a short on, in fact. Because you could just zoom in on those sections and actually show that. So that's going on my uh, GarageBand, GarageBand not showing all sections. Uh, I think that would be a good video title. GarageBand not showing all sections? Question mark. And it can be like, Bleh. like you're going to have that YouTuber face. Oh, I don't know. I'll try and find out. I'll try and help you. All right. Um, yeah, exactly. That, that's the other thing you can do. So a uh, good point there from Thomas. If you, if, yeah, if you get to this one, what you can do is you can say, right, I want to make sure I catch facts giving because that sounds interesting. You click on that one and here it'll say this in your time zone. Say so live in two days, 25th November at 9.30 and I can go notify me. But what that'll actually be is it'll be the 24th of November at say 3 p.m. or what is it? 4 p.m. or 7 p.m. I think whether you're east coast, west coast or like 1 a.m. for UK folks. So that's the easiest way to do it. So you can set a notification and then you'll actually get that notification there in YouTube. So I, I do try and make it easy. Look, I know, I know there's a lot of stuff. I know there's a lot of things out there and there's a lot of content happening. But um, yeah, if you, if you get that, uh, that newsletter, it usually comes at the start of each weekend and then it will tell you what's happening on that weekend and in the following week here on Studio Live today. And you'll be golden. <laughs> I won't tap out, Hulk Hogan, right? Yeah, every time, I say, every time I say tap out, I think of that. Or I think of that Simpsons tapped out game like that mobile game that was just like a horrible money grab don't don't play freemium games uh that should work now yeah yeah give it a go it should work i'm all t i'm all tapped out chris rosy hello chris rosy my chris rosy my mum and dad were talking about you they they think you're one they think everyone's wonderful here but they're like oh that christopher rosy is always in your always in your happy hour and he's always so polite and him and his family are always so lovely i'm like well there you go i'll pass it on so there you go chris uh, you are Jill and David approved, as are you, Mark. They always talk about Mark, bro, and Jade, and all the usual regulars. So, uh, yeah, listening while fixing a clothes dryer. Oh, yeah. You know how I fix a clothes dryer? Hello? Clothes dryer repair bad? Yeah, it's broken. Okay, thanks. That's that's me. But I'm super unhandy. Very, very unhandy. Uh, here's a question. Do you think that Apple are going to put pro apps on the iPad? We kind of talked about that a little bit at the start. I, I don't think so. Uh, what is coming is um, DaVinci Resolve. So if you're a video editor and something like LumaFusion or iMovie is not doing it for you, DaVinci Resolve is coming. That's been confirmed. We don't know when, but it is coming to iPad Pro. Probably only the M2 model, I believe. Maybe the M1 as well. Definitely need an M chip, I think. Um, so that's coming. In terms of music apps, yeah, we could speculate till the cows come home, but I don't think uh, I don't think we get a Logic Pro. I think I was talking about this with Jade, I think last time we were chatting on the channel, and it all comes down to Apple wanting to, the reason Apple have never released a touchscreen laptop, touchscreen laptop would be perfect, right? It would be an iPad and Mac hybrid. You could even run, you could even dual boot to iPad OS or Mac OS, depending on what you were doing. It would work. They both run the exact same chip now, the same hardware. They're both using M1s and M2s. It would work. Why don't Apple want it to work? Because they want you to buy an iPad and a Mac. Is that evil corporation stuff? Probably. Can we do anything about it? Not really. Should I stop asking rhetorical questions? Almost certainly. 
So, yeah, that's where it's at. G'day, Frigsy. Very late to the party. That's all right, Frigsy. We're just talking. We've talked all things today, mate. We've talked, uh, we talked Twitter. We talked TikTok. We talked, uh, we talked, um, social media and all the controversies around it at the moment. Uh, oh, there you go. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Feeling is mutual. Uh, doctor's orders starting getting optimizing performance again on my 2017 iPad. Is it time to upgrade? What a good question. Let's, um, Let's go SLT Studio Live today. So for those that don't know, and this is a shameless self-promotion because I know when you need to tell people that you are promoting something, <laughs> you can go to my iPad buyers, guys, studiolivetoday.com slash iPad. If you're shopping, you can use the Amazon links and the eBay links there for refurbished ones. So yeah, look, at this point in time, I kind of recommend for, for the all-rounders, I recommend like a ninth gen, which I think is the 28, no, 2019 actually iPad, um, or one of the iPad Pros. For the budget side of things, yeah, like so the, the 2017 used to be in my budget recommendations because of the updates in iOS 15 and 16, it's kind of fallen out because it's, it's, it's a little long in the tooth and I'll show you uh, what I mean when you compare it. So if you go to apple.com, there is a cool thing you can do here in the iPad section. You can go to the compare, and this can help you compare a bunch of different models. So if we find your 2017, which I believe is the seventh gen. Is this, this is the thing. They don't make it easy to, to know. I think it's this one. Um, what I'll have to do is I'll have to go to... Oh, I don't have it anymore. Uh, I think it's this one. It's either that one or it's the eighth gen. 2017. Let's just bring them both up. So either of these, you're running the eight. Yeah, I think it's the A10 that you're on because the A12 Bionic is still pretty good. So the eighth gen is actually not bad. The tenth gen is the new colourful ones. The ninth gen is actually the one that I'm recommending for a lot of folks right now. This is still a current model and it starts at 329. This has got the A13 Bionic chip. So yeah, basically anything before the A12 Bionic is going to start being long in the tooth. Running iPad OS 16, it'll still work, but only just. Uh, and you can definitely get some performance upgrades if you go even to the iPad 9th generation. These days, um, yeah, I, I, I've used the 9th gen, so my, my daughter has the 8th gen, which is that one. So yeah, it must be the 7th gen, or even the 6th gen, is it, with the A9? No, yeah, so both the 6th gen and the 7th gen, which I think are the 2017 and 2018, they both have the A10 processor, which is... Yeah, getting a little bit long in the tooth. The 8th gen uh, has the A12. That's the one that my daughter has. I've used GarageBand on that. I've never had optimizing performance. Um, I haven't put it through the ringer like I do with my Pro, but it's it runs really well. And then the 9th gen, using the A13, that thing flies along. And that's what my mum has. And uh, yeah, it works really well. So if you wanted to go for that, I would, I would look around and look for refurbished 9th gen because now that the 10th gen is out or even 8th gen now that the 10th gen is out you can get pretty good deals on uh, on used or refurbished uh slightly older models and uh, that's always a good way to go like the more that apple bring new stuff out the better the prices are on the the second hand and the used so I don't, it's not that you can't produce, but yeah, if, if you're spending more time looking at optimizing performance and less time being able to create, it, it's probably time. With iPad OS 16 coming out, it's probably time to look at, uh, at something. I don't normally say that. I won't ever tell you to, uh, to go and buy things if you don't have to, but it's probably around about time for you, Doc, in my personal opinion. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I'm the same. Look, Luma Fusion. If you're not aware of Luma Fusion, Luma Fusion is Luma, Luma, Luma Fusion is a video editor for iPad and iPhone even. So if you've ever watched a video here on Studio Live today, it has been edited by me probably while walking around on Luma Fusion. So this is Luma. So there's 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 the last video. So that's like a clip that I pulled out of one of the the live streams. That's me editing it together here in Luma Fusion. So. I use it pretty simply because I don't do all the bells and whistles. I'm not doing crazy transitions and I'm not adding in nasty effects or anything, but it is a really powerful, like here, here it is on the iPad. It is a super powerful, like it's, you've got six channels of audio, you've got six channels of video and like some people are like, oh, I need much more than that. Yeah, that's cool. But for most of us, yeah, you're going to be able to do everything you need to do right here on your your iPad or your iPhone with LumaFusion. So like you, Mars, I'm going to uh, take a pass on DaVinci Resolve because I, I don't need any more complexity in my life. I need I need more simplification. 
right? I want it to be there. Uh, I want my random tangential and or unanswerable question answered. Uh, if you could throw it out here. There you go. We've got, what, we've got seven minutes left. Throw the weirdest question you can think of out there. Go for it. <laughs> yes, and if, exactly as Jay said here, if you never want to see optimized performing again in your life, then uh, get the M2 iPad. Although, I got the 2020. So my iPad is the iPad Air 2020, which is the first generation is this little sucker right here, first generation of the 11 inch, and that's got the A12X Bionic. And that flies. I have not once had optimizing performance on my iPad. That's a 2020 model from two, nearly three years ago. So yeah, uh, and again, same, same with the, the regular iPads. The regular iPads are so good now. Those Basically, if anything with an A12 or an A13 or above, you're going to be golden with GarageBand because it really isn't that power hungry. But if you want to future-proof yourself and get something with the M1, uh, you can do so. Yeah, jump on over to the iPad guide if you want to. <laughs> my fifth gen, oh mate, my iPad Air 2, I mean, it's got a big crack down the middle of it. It's all old and crusty. It, it'll never update past iOS 15. Yeah, it's a bit long in the, long in the tooth. Uh, question, adding drums. Uh, I have a ballad. I have a ballad that I want to add drums to. I have the follow button on, but the drummer won't follow the ballad. How can you adjust the tempo of the drummer to match your song? Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So, uh, I have a ballad. So, what you need to, the, the key to this is to make sure that what you're importing is at the exact same BPM as your project. And one thing that GarageBand is not great at is any sort of audio stretching or beat matching. So unfortunately, unlike some other apps, where are we? Over here. Unlike some other apps, GarageBand doesn't allow you to... So if I if I imported something here that was off the grid, let, let, let's try it. Let's try an example. So if we listen to this track here, there's our metronome. This is at 84 BPM, right? If I came in here and I wanted to add a track that's completely different, say I wanted to add, stop now. Because we're up. You can stop now. All right. So I wanted to add in a brand new bit of audio to try and match my drummer to, and I brought in, say, this 8-bar challenge wave file. We'll just stick this down here. So, the, oh, that's not it. <laughs> that's not got any audio in it. Let's try something else. Uh, say, say I use this loop, because I happen to know that this loop is not going to be at the same BPM. So I bring this loop in here. And I want drums that are going to match this loop. So if we uh, if we solo this loop, actually you can't see that. I'm just going to have to throw your question off the screen at the moment here. So if we solo that, it sounds like this. But what you're hearing there, can you hear that that's not in time with the metronome? So that's at about 110 BPM and our project's at 84. Now there's ways that you can stretch that. There's an app called Audio Stretch. It's a little clunky. It's not really going to work so well. So the absolute best thing to do is to make sure whatever you bring in here that it matches the tempo of this because if we tried to say get a drummer track let's say we added a drummer track to this this is probably the problem you're having if you don't have that matched up if we've got a drummer track in here we've got kyle doing his business let's just solo kyle and this beat they're going to sound like this Right, Kyle can't follow that because it's at a different tempo. So I think this is at a 110. So if we change this up, if we make this tempo instead 110 BPM, let's just see if these match up now. Yeah, so you can hear there that Kyle and that particular audio file are now in the same tempo. So now, if we wanted to go in here, we can uh, we can go into Kyle, not his settings, we can tap on that one. We can go into Kyle and we can hit the follow button and say, right, we want you to follow this audio file that we brought in here. It will actually do that now. So now it'll create a nice Kyle beat. And they'll sit nicely in the pocket together, yeah? So that's the key thing with that. That's probably the, the challenge you're coming across there is if you're importing a file, it doesn't match the BPM. The drummer can only sync and follow to an audio file that is at the same BPM as your overall project speed. So hopefully that helps you out with that one, Rena. Uh, do you put oils in your beard? No, it's never long enough. I've, I've, I've thought about growing the big Santa beard, Cold Acre, but I don't know. I, I already look a bit like with the bald head. Can you imagine this? with like the one eye, the bald head, and like a big bushy beard. Like, I'd look so intimidating. People would just cross the street to avoid me. They already do, but they'd um, cross the street to avoid me even more. 
Uh, Frigsy, I've eventually got an iPhone and was looking at GarageBand. If I created a 16-bar beat and export it to import Kate Walk, would I export it as a stereo audio file? Uh, would it, yes, it would. So, yeah, so with GarageBand, when you're exporting from your phone, and look, it, it works exactly the same on your phone as your iPad. And welcome to iOS, by the way, Frigsy. I know you, you hang out in these shows and you're like, I don't use a PC, but uh, sure, I'll hang out with you guys. But when you're exporting here, you can actually choose. It will always export it as stereo. So if we tap and hold on this and you hit the share button and you go to song, yeah, just make sure it's uncompressed wave, 44.124 bit. And also, if you've only just set it up, unfortunately, something that GarageBand does, I don't know if it still does this, but it definitely used to, it used to default to 16-bit audio. So come into your GarageBand before you export, and in fact, before you start recording, preferably in the future, make sure that you're set to 24-bit. So tap on the cog there, go to advanced, same on your iPad, uh, iPhone, and just enable 24-bit audio resolution. It'll just mean that any 24-bit samples you use from GarageBand, or if you're recording your own audio, it'll record and export in 24-bit, so that'll match better if you bring it back into Cakewalk. So, but yes, it'll, it'll always be stereo. In fact, it's harder to get mono. It's almost impossible. You'd have to convert it to mono using a different app if you did want it mono in the end, but good question. Uh, what was your favorite? Oh, what was your favorite dish at the Asian restaurant we had at the casino? Jade, I was there the other day because I went to the cricket and I'm like, what do I get for what do I get for dinner? It's the it's the dinner break at the cricket, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to Lucky Noodle, and I went there, but I was, wasn't super hungry, so I had I had this fried tofu that was so good. Like next time you're in Adelaide, you got to get it. It's just I don't know. I I know some people don't love tofu, but I happen to be a tofu fan. But it was this silken tofu with this delicious breading, a little bit of chili oil, and my goodness, it was good. Uh, so that's that's probably my new favourite <laughs> my new favourite dish at uh, the old Lucky Noodle. <laughs> Is hello a question? Probably not. Probably not. All righty. Um, I think we're going to uh, we're going to finish up shortly. Uh, kids keep asking for what I want for Christmas, and now they know a new iPad. They are so good to dad. There you go. I I hundred percent agree. I concur. I support this this message that you should definitely get a new iPad. Just don't get um don't get um. Don't get an NFT. <laughs> I read a song last Christmas. I have to dig it out for my Christmas happy hour called um, I Don't Want an NFT for Christmas. <laughs> and last Christmas, like NFTs were all the rage and everyone was like defending them and saying how they were going to be the next big thing. And it's so funny that it's just taken 12 months and now they're just in the toilet. And it's like, oh, well, fried one time with peanut sauce. Yeah, right. Love it. Yeah, they also do, um, they do dumplings. They do veggie, because I'm veggie, they do veggie dumplings that are to die for. And on Thursday nights, which I'm never out Thursday nights, but there's $1 dumplings. So you can just load up, like just get 10 dumplings for 10 bucks. Nice pint of Asahi. Man, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> it's only 10.30, only but I'm getting hungry. All right, uh, that is going to do it for this show. I know this was a bit of a weird show, but hopefully you be bared with me. My voice is held out. I'm going to go and have some rest time now for a couple of days and uh, make sure that I'm all good for a, a big weekend because we've got a heap of shows. Uh, you saw it before, but we've got a whole heap of shows coming up here on the channel, and I know Jade does as well. So I've tried to... Jade, if I've, if I've got stuff at the wrong times <laughs> that coincides with you, let me know. But um, th there's uh, three more shows coming up. Uh, sorry, two more shows coming up this week, uh, and then we've got uh, the, a big weekend of shows uh, of, as usual. But on the 25th or the 24th, for many of you, on Thanksgiving, we have Faxgiving. So again, that's going to be in the afternoon. So once you've hung out with your family and you're full of turkey, you need to escape and you need to, to be somewhere else, you can come and just uh, listen in and ask questions and we'll just chat and have a yarn. We'll start looking at some of the Black Friday deals then as well, just to see if there's anything in those early, early deals uh, from that one. And then we've got a Black Friday show as well, uh, which is happening on Black Friday, which we'll take a look at. Are there any good deals? Is there anything out there? I don't I don't know. Um, last year was pretty shoddy, to be honest, because uh, I'm, I'm never going to tell you to buy stuff. See, I've seen people that do the Black Friday things. They're like, oh, this looks pretty good. I'm like, nah. If I've not used it, if I don't know anything about it, I'll, I might put it out there and say, oh, that's, that's an interesting mini keyboard. It's like 20 bucks. If you buy it, you're taking a risk. But what I tend to do is look at my gear guide and then look at Amazon, look at Sweetwater, look at eBay, look at these places, and then see what that I already recommend is at a good price right now. And that's what it's all about. Occasionally, there'll be something left field that I'll buy that is just a too good of a deal to, to pass up. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know about any of those. But uh, yeah, again, don't do it despite because it's cheap. And some remember, the golden rule about this is take reviews with a grain of salt, because especially on Amazon, many reviews are paid for or fake. And always take the original price with a grain of salt. So when something says it was $129 and now it's only $59, 
that thing's probably been selling for 79 for the last year. But they can say that because the retail price is $100. So, yeah, take those couple of things with a grain of salt and uh, be good. Uh, sorry I couldn't hang out for long with the gang. Uh, I'm not around on the weekend, but I'll catch you. Very cool. That, that is fine and dandy like a sour candy. Oh, yeah. And uh, if, you wanna, if you want the apps side of things, uh, check out Jake because the app sales... App sales are okay because the problem with the last couple of years is supply chains have been so dodgy that nothing's been available. So all the good gear, it's been so hard to get that these retailers are not going to discount it because they're already selling it as soon as it comes into stock. Whereas apps are going to be uh, are going to be good to go. So go and check out Jade's shows. Uh, that's that's totally fine. Um, yeah, but if you can be back, that's that's fine, Thomas. You're allowed to have a life, mate. Uh, we, we appreciate everything you do around here. Thank you for that. Uh, and yeah, try before you buy. If, if you can, if you can go to an actual physical store and try some things out, that's good. And if you do buy, check the returns policy. Uh, Amazon's usually pretty good with that. eBay's usually pretty good, has buyer protection. If you buy from Dodgy McGee's Music Emporium, you're probably not going to be able to return it. So great point there from Phil. All righty, that is going to do it for this one. Big saddle, IK. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, IK okay, Multimedia, selling good stuff. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks for being here. I hope you had a good time and I hope you enjoyed some of the rants. As usual, we got to about four of the 10 topics I was going to talk about, uh, but we answered some questions. We had some fun. If you're watching on the replay, uh, hit the thumbs up button and leave your questions in the comments because I'm always hanging around there. And as you saw from today, a lot of the questions you ask usually become a video in the future. So read his question today about sections. You better believe that's the next GarageBand quick tip coming your way very soon. Thanks everyone for being here. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, look after your health, and I'll see you next time here on Studio Live today. Bye for now.